Suppose you had a problem that was a hundred yards long and the faster you could go from the start to the finish, the faster you could divert the outbreak of a deadly plague or find ways to combat global warming or build a lighter, faster plane. Or imagine, when you crossed the finish line, you would understand a complex biological process so well you would be able to cure disease or even extend life itself. Well, right now, corporations, universities, and governments from around the world are lining up for the race of the century. It's a race to solve some of the most complex problems anyone has ever considered. And being first across the finish line can mean not only who gets rich and who doesn't, but who lives and who dies. Imagine a traveler from Hong Kong who steps off a plane in Los Angeles and coughs. And suppose he has avian flu. How quickly do we realize people are getting sick? How fast does it spread? What do we do? That's the kind of problem that Kai Kadu of Los Alamos National Labs is trying to solve with the supercomputer. The reason why we need uh, high performance computing for that kind of modeling is really that we have 280 million people in the computer. They move around, we know where they work every day, we know that, that, that they take business trips and vacation trips, and they have to interact with each other. And that, that takes time. If we were to do it on a desktop, it would take the whole flu season to get the answer. So we definitely need high-performance computing to get the answer fast. If you assume the virus comes from, say, Asia into the country, say it comes into Los Angeles airport, and then we have a bunch of uh, sick individuals. What, what happens next is probably that it will spread somewhat locally in the Los Angeles area and then the virus might be detected. Uh, if you wait too long, and that's something that's really important, the virus due to you know, mo mobility by airplanes, for instance, really spreads fast across the country, which then makes it more difficult to contain the virus. The more high-performance computing power we can get, the more reliable is the answer on who are the most likely first responders in the event of an outbreak. It's kind of like comparable with the way weather forecasting started out um, several dec decades ago. Um, if you know more exactly the path of a hurricane, you know exactly or more exactly who to evacuate and who not to. High performance computing is letting us visualize things we've never been able to see before. And according to Chris Johnson, it's helping us answer fundamental questions and understand science at an entirely new level. One of the things that's happened, I think, recently on, on the visualization side is the ability to see things at these, these high, high resolutions for the first time um, and, the, and the ability to see them in more of an, a time-dependent, interactive way rather than a played-back movie from one viewpoint has allowed scientists to gain insight that they couldn't get in any other ways. And this is how we progress in science. These are the tools that we've created that open new windows for the scientists to see in new ways. If you look at many, maybe even most of the great discoveries throughout mankind, you'll find that, that before the great discovery was the creation of a new tool or a tool that's been used in a new way. And that's really where high performance computing and visualization, these high uh, resolution display walls that people are creating, um, the, the graphics cards that, that people are creating, the, the hardware side, the new algorithms, the software, these are the new tools for the scientists to look at their data and their science in new ways and will make new discoveries because of it. Chris says that before most great discoveries comes the creation of a new tool or a tool that is used in a new way. When we first learned how to make lenses, it changed our view of the world. But it was putting lenses together that really changed things. 
Suddenly, we learned our own world was more amazing than we'd ever imagined. And with different lenses, we could see whole new worlds. An understanding of optics advanced astronomy, medicine, physics, and chemistry. Optics changed everything. And now the sciences are about to be revolutionized again. This time with supercomputers. Just ask Tony Mazzacappa. I started working on core collapse supernovae about 20 years ago. So it's been, it's been about two decades of, of uh, painful progress. <laughs>